partial revolution of the center wheel drives the third wheel a complete revolution. And this in turn drives the fourth wheel much further. As a result, a few turns of the mainspring barrel, driven by the mainspring, will drive the escape wheel many, many revolutions, enough to last a full day and longer. What we have now is a complete model watch train. Through the gears, the mainspring drives the escape wheel. The escape wheel teeth push first on one pallet jewel and then the other. The pallet fork nudges the jewel pin on the balance wheel to keep it moving. The swinging balance wheel on its return trip moves the pallet fork. This unlocks the escape wheel to release a little more energy from the mainspring. Back and forth, the balance wheel swings, controlled by its small coiled spring, the hair spring, in perfect rhythm. Each swing unlocks the escape wheel so it can give an extra push to a pallet jewel, and this is passed on to the balance wheel assembly to keep the watch ticking far more steadily than any beating heart. All we have to do now to measure time is count the ticks. But this would be a tedious job and not very practical. Just as we needed a dial on our water clock, here too we need a method for recording the flow of power. So to the shaft of this gear or wheel, we add an indicating hand to measure seconds. As the gear train of a watch moves far enough to make five ticks of the escapement, the second hand moves one graduation on its dial. To count the minutes, we can attach a dial and fasten a pointer to this gear wheel, which is just the right size so that it turns one complete revolution while the second hand makes 60 revolutions. And to count the hours, we can have another pointer geared just so to move one complete revolution every 12 hours. The second hand makes a complete revolution and the minute hand moves one graduation and when the minute hand makes a complete revolution an hour has passed. Now we can tell what time it is. But a gear train all strung out like this is a long way from an actual watch. Let's let our model do a bit of rearranging all by itself. we know what time it is and how and why we know. A fine watch itself is of course a compact precision mechanism with parts miraculously small and fashioned by craftsmen with incredible accuracy. But the basic principles are those we have just seen, frequently applied on a scale almost microscopic to produce the world's most accurate portable measuring instrument. In a truly fine watch, there are many things which make possible the accurate control and release of power. 
jewels, for example. Many people correctly believe jewels increase the value of a watch. They increase the value all right, but not by being ornamental. Jewels are in a watch strictly for business. They add to the value only when correctly placed and used. They are the bearings which lessen friction, increase the regularity of the running, and greatly extend a watch's life of dependable service. Harder than the finest steel, these tiny surfaces are finished so smoothly they reflect images like a camera lens. And working with oil, it takes a drop no larger than a pinhead for the entire watch. There is almost no friction. If any single part of a watch can be called more important, it's the hairspring. It absorbs and gives out an equal amount of force with each beat or swing at regular intervals. In a fine watch, the hairspring has uniform thickness throughout its whole length is polished to a mirror-like finish and made of metal relatively unaffected by magnetism or changes in temperature. It can be apparently distorted, but it always returns to perfect shape. Hair springs are overcoiled, like we see here, to allow the spring to breathe evenly. Were this not done, the spring would coil and uncoil unevenly fluff out on one side and interfere with the accuracy of the watch. Because a watch is required to run in any position, to be accurate, the balance wheel must be perfectly balanced in any position. This is done by poising. The wheel is poised when there is no effect of the pull of gravity reflected in its action on the knife-like edges of the instrument which checks it. With perfect poising, and with the hairspring centered on the balance wheel, it runs accurately in any position all the time. And it's the same with all the parts. The tiny screws, scarcely larger than a speck of dust. The exceedingly small shafts. The precisely made gears and pinions. the sturdy nickel-silver plates and bridges. Every part is made with utmost precision, precision which approaches perfection. When we look at the almost invisible parts, understand what they are required to do, realize the uncanny skill needed to make a fine watch, we can easily understand why it is a masterpiece of precision and accuracy. Here is a truly wonderful mechanism. With it, you can accurately measure the passing of time and record that passing for your use and convenience. But this mighty little servant is a creation of beauty, too. A precious possession to be worn with pride and confidence every day, every week, every month, year after year. Listen. What do you hear? It's the ticking of a fine watch. Wherever you go, whatever you do, America's fine watch ticks steadily, accurately on. Five ticks every second.